Hi, I'm Jill Galloway. I'm an artist educator at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. In today's Drawn to Figures lesson, we're taking a look at a portrait of Brian Stevenson. Now, this is a really powerful portrait with a lot of meaning and symbolism in it. So we're first gonna take a look at that portrait and learn a bit about his biography. And then we're gonna do an art lesson based on one of the objects found within a portrait, one of the jars. Now, this lesson will be about how to paint something that's clear or see-through. But first, let's talk about Brian Stevenson. This portrait is very much about how we remember history. It was created not only to honor Brian Stevenson's contribution to criminal justice reform, but also to focus on his efforts towards healing old scars from the past. Stevenson is a criminal defense lawyer and founder of the Equal Justice Initiative. This organization provides legal counsel for underserved prisoners wrongly convicted and those who've been denied a fair trial. The Equal Justice Initiative is also documenting lynchings that took place over a 70-year period that followed the Civil War and emancipation. To start the healing of racial division, we must reconcile with the past, and to that end, Stevenson founded the Legacy Museum and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama, the birthplace of the Civil Rights Movement. In this portrait, the lighting is dark. We see Brian Stevenson standing looking directly into the camera with a serious and intense gaze. He seems to be cloaked with the weight of history here. In the background, we see rows of jars. If we were to flip the light on, these jars would look like this. There's more than 800 jars filled with soil from the site where someone was lynched. On the front of each jar, a name of the victim. While the jars are filled with different colored soils from all over the country, they're really filled with memories. Thousands of people were lynched between 1882 and 1968. Today, we're going to learn how to draw a clear jar. The supplies you'll need for today's lesson are pencil, paper, eraser, and watercolor paints. When you draw a jar, you need to make it symmetrical or equal on both sides. Starting with the top or the opening of the jar, you need to make an oval. Draw a center line from that circle down to the bottom of the jar and repeat the oval shape, except make it larger this time. Remember, when you draw your oval, it needs to be equal on both sides of that center line. Now, just draw one side of your jar. To make the second side the same as the first side, you need to make small measurements, creating a dot to dot, moving your hand along the center line and measuring how far out the jar goes. When you fill your jar, lightly draw an oval shape locating the top of your substance. This will make it look like it's taking up a space within the jar. The key to making something clear is looking for the highlights in the glass and keeping them white, and also looking for the colors that are reflected in the glass. If you have a background color, it will show through your glass jar, but not through the highlight section. The white part will have to stay white. The highlight will also curve along with the shape of your jar. Your jar will also have darker areas where the glass is thicker, where you're looking through the turned glass. These jars are not only full of soil, but they're full of memories. In these photographs by Ken Gonzalez Day, we see another approach towards shedding light on this dark part of our history. In this series called Erased Lynchings, the victim and the rope are digitally removed from the image, leaving only the crowd, the racism, and their desire for violence. No artwork, memorial, or museum can erase the lasting scars and trauma of lynchings but they can start a conversation towards learning and hopefully healing. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Drawn to Figures lesson. We would love to see your clear objects. If you wouldn't mind posting your images on social media with the hashtag MyMPG, then we can all check it out. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.